Brett Gallagher. Present. God. I did. Bud Mather. Bud I Mather, thank you. It's like I know it's Bud. Thank you. Vince Adams? Here. Councillor Thorstad? Here. Chief Ogden? Here. And we do have a quorum. Okay. Stand and do the pledge. Okay, we'll call the meeting to order at 445 and we can start with our old business uh, for First Avenue. Or do we want to do the approval of the minutes or old minutes first? We'll have the minutes for the, at the next meeting, so we can just skip the approval of the mi minutes. Okay. If we do want, if you want to go ahead and talk about um, old business with First Avenue, I think that would be just fine. All right. We'll start with uh, First Avenue, old business. Anything anybody wants to bring up? I would like to make some comments. I got to thinking about it, and I've talked to a few people here in town. Uh, friends and neighbors, <clears throat> of course, they don't live on First Avenue, but uh, the idea of blocking that street for traffic cross through. Uh, the feeling I get and after talking, uh, we kind of disagree with doing that. The reason being it's a public street. It's it's meant for traffic for residents. We do know that uh, folks use it as a crossover to get to 228. Uh, they're just not willing to sign off, you know, having that street blocked. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to block a perfectly good street that goes all the way through. However, they do understand the problem with the traffic and, and, and the speed that people use to go through there. I drove through there the other day again, uh, heading up towards 7th doing a crossover up there on 228 and I had people come up behind me pretty fast so I get that but blocking the street off uh, the idea because then other folks are going to want to start doing the same thing with other streets if you block one street off because of speeders and people crossing over I'm going to want the same thing up on Mountain View people are going to want the same thing up on Elm there's some other streets here in town that have high traffic and speeders so are we going to block all the streets off and just one little way in and one little way out or, you know, so that's, that's my thoughts. I kind of backing off of, you know, what we, what we talked about before. I just okay. want to make a note of that. Okay. Just so you know, took a recent survey of the residents of that street and it was a hundred percent for a temporary closure and possibly a full closure. I still disagree with it because once they do that, you're going to send a message through town that other folks are going to want to close their streets off too for the same reasons. Might be a different location, but they're going to want to close the street off. So, I mean, that's just, that's just what I'm coming from. Can I speak to that concern? Because I, I think it's a valid concern. I think, I think there is definitely um, the idea of, you know, nobody likes traffic on their street. They don't. You you want to have a nice, safe residential street. Um, I will say that I think First Avenue is a little bit different in that way, in that if you look at the traffic plan, First Street is not supposed to be a connecting road. It's supposed to be a residential street as opposed to Mountain View and some of these others that are supposed to be a higher traffic and higher volume road. And um, First Avenue became a shortcut because, quite honestly, it was not planned the way that a residential community is supposed to be planned. And so... Um, to me, the idea of closing that one would be fixing something that was done incorrectly 
um, in the past. And that would be moving traffic to then where it's supposed to be going, which is um, along that traffic light there. However, I do, like I said, I do see your concern and I do think it's, you know, something that we should look at. Um, I know we have been talking about before you were here too, just in an open discussion, not as in an actual making any decisions. Um, but we were talking about if we were to move forward with the idea of a temporary piece, it could be tried out and then we could have some public forums and um, we could then go over the options of potentially closing it permanently, adding speed bumps, making it one way. And we can also have tested out how much impact closing that actually makes because we're all hypothesizing that it's going to make a fair amount of impact. Um, we don't really know for sure yet. So, and we could do different traffic studies on it or we could also try it out and, and see. So. Just just as a comment there. In my opinion, I would be open to some experimentation, but not in, you know, a, a deadpan, we're going to go this direction. If you want to try some different things, I'm all for that because whatever you try there, we're going to try somewhere else too at some point. Because again, Mountain View is one of the big ones because I live on that one. So we have a similar problem there. It's just that they're using it to get across town. But again, I understand your guys' issue on First Avenue. I'm just not willing to just go in there and block the street and then say, OK, we're going to shut it off. When you have folks that are locally here that do use that street, they're not going to 228, but they're using they're, they're having to cross 228 to go on up the hill. They're going to make a left hand turn and go up and go into the avenues on the other side of town. They're not using it to just cross to 228. So there is an access there for folks that are going up into other streets. They have to access 228 to get there. Yeah. But uh, I'm open to some, I mean, I'm open to, you know, I'm open-minded about some of the ways, but yeah, we can see what happens. Yeah, we weren't going to close it. <clears throat> really doable. Ways, but uh, we were talking about, he's got a sheet over there that he went to all but three of the people that live on the mm -hmm. street. They all said, they want something done. Yeah, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's the only street in town that connects two highways, which makes it unique uh, by itself. And due to the high volume of traffic, um, mm -hmm. it's probably the only residential street in town that sees that amount of traffic in a month's time or day's time or week. And traffic and speed, um, it's not unique to First Avenue. It's in every street in town uh, in some form or another. But um, we can start there and learn from it as far right. as what can be done with other airport road, uh, Mountain View, all these streets. Does the city own those recorders that go across the road, like the rubber hose that counts the traffic? I think those are ODOT. Are they? I think, yeah. Right, so we could maybe lease one for First Avenue? Actually, um, our radar trailer at one time was equipped to count. Uh, count. Uh, and from what I understand, these new signs that we have up do also, but for some reason there's a problem with that one on First Avenue. <laughs> uh, but at one time, that's how we come up with the 64,000 vehicles was from that count. So what is the common issue with those signs? Is it batteries? Somebody vandalizing them? I think it's battery issue. I don't know. I haven't been real happy with these signs because, I mean, since I've been in this position, because it seems like there's always an issue uh, with them. I would like to get something that's more reliable and um, we can get good data from. There's an well, option. I think that there's an option for some you can convert to solar, but I don't know if it might just be better to get new ones instead of converting them. So definitely something to look into. 
I have a question since we're talking about those down here on the main drag that weren't there one or two that were solar powered at one time mm. on the main drag there might have they might have been I don't know if they were solar I thought they were battery because oh, I thought they had a the little thing on them yeah, maybe, I, maybe not maybe not yeah but I, I'm just wondering what their reliability was because it seemed it appeared they worked for a while and then they were yeah toasting yeah yeah yeah, it's my understanding the batteries only last about three days in these things. Yeah, from what I understand. On traffic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. More yeah. traffic, the more it works. Yeah. The less battery. Yeah. And yeah. you got to get somebody to go out there and change them, and, and, it, and it takes. Yeah, it takes somebody to. Yeah. Rearrange their schedule sometimes yeah. to do that. And yeah. Yeah. Can I make a motion? I'd make a motion we shut first off on like a two month trial period. And then see how much feedback we get, which I'm sure is going to be plenty, like the gentleman said. And then consider speed bumps or whatever it's going to take to do, because I, I don't feel that the city's going to allow or that the, the townspeople is going to want that street completely blocked permanent. I'd like to put somebody to work it right for me to put it into a motion right now and, and vote on it. OK, okay. Could, could I tweak it just a little bit? Could we make a motion to develop for staff to develop a plan that we rec then take to recommend to council to do that in December? That would be fine. OK. For like a two month period. Mm -hmm. Do I hear a second to that? I'll second that. OK. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Great. Motion been made and approved. Okay, we've discussed the uh, stop signs at 15th. Is there some more that we need to do on that? 15th and long? It would be good. We already discussed it last time. Um, and actually, we made a motion. So I think we're fine. Okay. With that one, as long as, unless anybody wants to bring up any concerns, we can work on bringing that as a recommendation for council as well. So under new business, would that be also considered under stop sign placements? I think under new business, that would be considered additional stop sign placements on ones that we haven't already discussed. Okay. So that would be talking about Airport Road and 45th. Some of the other ones in Airport Road and any other stop signs you all want to discuss. Is that open for discussion now? That is open for discussion now. So I've had some thoughts about the junior high area up there. And the other day coming home, I uh, saw a couple of close calls there. Mostly it's parents coming out of the junior high or pulling off but not getting out of a lane of traffic to let somebody into a car and then pulling out in front of the car that's trying to go around them because they thought they were going into the parking space. But that it, and I think, if I remember right, some years ago it came up in a city council meeting, possibly. But you have Mountain View there that's an open through there, and you have 22nd that comes up there with the stop sign in front of the junior high. <laughs> And I, I live up there. I hate to even bring it up, but it's just it's just not right. Possibility of putting a three way stop sign in there. Everybody stops just like a four way. It's just three ways right there. I don't think you're going the wrong way. So the, right, right at the junior high. At the junior high where it crossed the T crosses 22nd on Mountain View. Yeah. Can you go up there <laughs> right there, Adam, right that one? Yeah, that's there. it right there. Yeah. For several reasons, OK, you have the crosswalks there. To begin with, and even during school times. <laughs> and I look at you, Keith, I'm not <laughs> ragging on you, but no, even not. during school times, okay. I see people come flying it, flying down that street because uh, they're in a hurry to get to the next school or pick up a kid and then they got to go back to another school and pick somebody else up. Or they're just in their own zone. I don't know. I have more time to observe this uh, because of my work schedule during the week. And so something really needs to be done there because one of these days we're going to have a good accident or somebody's going to get clipped with a car. 
And so it's just a thought. Kind of talked about this with my wife. She kind of thinks it might be a good idea. I haven't talked to any other folks in the area about this because I'm just spitballing right now. Almost like a three way stop already. It would, well, we it, it's not so no, because. Okay. Uh, like if I went to that intersection, I would be slowing down and looking. You would, yeah. but I'd say 75% don't. <laughs> I know. Because I can stand there in the yard and watch them. Oh, yeah. I think streets, I think stop signs would be good there. Um, so if I can speak as a parent for a second and not as a father, I drop my son off every morning there and mm -hmm. people don't stop. I know. I know. So I see it. As a speaking as a community member, that is something I would like to see at least discussed a little bit further as well. I don't know if there's a because I don't know about a whole lot about doing surveys and things like that. But if if some kind of survey, you know, needed to be done to do that, or maybe. I don't know how the parents, you know, that are picking up kids are going to feel about it because they're all in a hurry anyway. But some of them, or majority of them, I think would probably think it would be a good idea. But like I, again, I'm just spitballing here, but I appreciate your input as just a somebody who's, you know, a parent dropping somebody off. Well, Where I they? think that's probably the whole purpose of this committee is to make things safer. Mm -hmm. uh, our and streets, our sidewalks. And whatever. that's what I was going to say is so, anything to make it safer, safer around a school is always yeah. a good thing. And it, I, I think that's worth forwarding. Yes, definitely. So do we need a motion for that? Or how do we want to proceed? Would you like to make a motion for stop signs at that intersection? I would like to make a motion that a three-way stop be uh, researched and possibly installed at 22nd and Mountain View near the junior high. And recommended to council. And recommend to council. <laughs> Do we hear a second? I'll second that. Okay, motion is second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, motion is passed. We're just moving right along here. We are. Yeah, it is. Well, yeah. With that, just to follow up with that, I that may help with some of the traffic control up there with the speed. And that's yeah. one of my ultimate goals, but yeah. making that area safer. You know, I think that's a really good idea because right after that, as you keep going down, you hit that hill. Mm -hmm. And in the morning, because I drop my kids off the <laughs> light, in the morning, there are always always some kids walking up yep. that hill. Mm -hmm. every day every day and there are people just zipping on down so at least that would have stopped them for a little bit i know we've been talking about sidewalks along there and some other things but that would at least make people pause around school so a caveat to that or an add-on maybe is so they spent, I don't know how many thousands of dollars revamping the junior high and or the parking lot so that they could have bus slips in there. Do you know where they come in the afternoons and set up before they go into the bus slips? They don't. They go to the church. They were parking on the street. Now they go into the church parking lot and tear up that parking lot with those big heavy buses. And they wait. And then they queue up into the bus slip later on. And I know that's probably a uh, school board issue, but it's something that uh, I need to take up with the school board because they're not utilizing that bus slip and staging properly. That's not what it was set up for, for them to park over here and then go in. When the buses come up, they should be coming up and going into the bus slip, prepared to pick up the kids and not staging somewhere else. And that creates two problems. That creates a traffic problem with folks that are coming in to pick up kids while they're moving and restaging at the junior high. And that creates another traffic issue also. 
So, but I don't know that there's anything here because I need to talk to maybe uh, the school board about that issue. Yes, unfortunately, that's not anything that we would have any control over. That would be something to talk to the school board about. Okay, so we can move on up to traffic concerns. Anybody have any input on that? Are we done with stop sign placements? I think we might still have some stop sign placements. Do we have any? I, I have one. Okay, perfect. Okay. Yeah, all right, back up. <laughs> so I received uh, an email from the principal at Oak Heights regarding um, some traffic related issues for kids crossing, uh, particularly at Elm and 6th Avenue. So the students use that, um, it's about a block, a couple blocks before the school, they use that every day. And he said that um, the other day somebody blew through the stop sign and they had other issues that day with what he considered near misses uh, with staff and students. Um, I know last year we had some issues, I right around there as well. Um, had somebody else complaining about the traffic around Oak Heights, um, I think the previous week. Um, so he suggested maybe a four way at uh, 6th and Elm to, you know, to get people to to stop at all. All four uh, intersect or, or four way stop there. I think it could be pretty helpful. Um, and you know the time being we are as a pd we are addressing the concern by just having people up there in the morning since it has been an issue um, so we've developed a plan to get people up there in the morning to try to get traffic stop slow down uh, and to deter any violations but uh, he had specifically asked if i could look into uh, making that a four-way stop I'd like to weigh in on that. Um, my granddaughters both go to that school right now. I periodically go pick them up. They live right up the street on 7th. However, in the afternoons, I haven't been there too many times in the morning, but in the afternoons, I also uh, kind of watch the traffic and what goes on there. And I support that 100% because I see people that come through there and they come up across from the four way down there. And they're going a little too fast in front of the school looking for that parking spot or you know they're just through traffic sometimes or they'll go up and they'll whip a ue in the middle of the street you know between an intercity you know, right here so they get back down at the other end and make us you know parking spot so with that i i, I do uh, support that 100 percent, and i'm glad you brought that up uh my question to you chief would be citations or warnings mm -hmm. because in a school zone especially i would think it would just be a citation no warning you get the citation but i don't know what you guys are doing right now as far as those kinds of we do yeah we do both yeah but in a school zone it, 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 there's more citations in a school zone than okay. warnings so, i appreciate that thank yeah. you so would uh, somebody like put that to a motion that we forward that for discussion or City manager, young you for that four way stop there. That is just add one thing. I'm almost questioning now. This is the third school with the four way stop that we just talked about just tonight. I'm wondering if this is a bigger package that we want to discuss with various four way stops at every school, um, or looking at least looking at it mm -hmm. because in looking at this. I think anywhere where we have crosswalks where we know that there's going to be a lot of kids crossing. Yeah, makes sense. I think we might want to consider four-way stop. So I think we could start with these three and then maybe we can continue to look into the other schools and, and add those in and maybe even talk to the school board and talk to um, council and present this as a school safety package you know traffic safety for our schools and this can be kind of part of a bigger solution and i just sort of wanted to see what you all thought about that i think it's a good idea yeah i do too yeah i also recommend getting the, the stop signs put up there now rather than later mm -hmm. okay let's then 
So you need a motion. So how about a motion for a recommendation starting first with the with this next one? We'll have that three. And then if somebody would want to make a motion for a larger school package, then we could we could do both of those. And again, as a recommendation to council. I'm trying. So let me understand. This is this is the more immediate one right here, but you want to enlarge enlarge it. So do we want to do two separate motions? I would do two that? separate motions. So one for Elm and Sixth Avenue, having a four way stop there, and then one to do research and make a recommendation to the council on a larger one for all of our schools. Okay. I just want to clear that up my skull. Perfect. I'll rec make the recommendation for the four way stop on Fifth and Elm. Six. Pardon? Six, six. Six, six. Very good. Okay. Do I hear a second to that? I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Okay. Motion second approved. So I'll make the motion for the expanded package to look in and research other areas uh, and other school areas that may need that type of protection with the four-way stops uh, and have second. it presented to the city council okay motion second all approved aye aye, aye. okay aye. seconded carried motion is approved this is discussion is that would that even be necessary couldn't wouldn't we actually go ahead with that anyway with the second motion hmm. we could but it's nice to have it Okay. formal like that, this yeah. keeps it cleaner yeah. okay and we've doubled down <laughs> <laughs> okay do we are we ready to move up from the stop sign issues to traffic concerns uh one of the things i'm seeing on 12th and 13th uh, because i've done some traffic work up there recently is as you go up the hill people are crossing the solid yellow there's double lines there or should be double lines there and they're crossing those into the oncoming lane if there's cars on this side so i think some striping on both those areas uh, would be appropriate uh, the striping up there is pretty bad where are we talking about where are we are you talking about up 12th up 12th Going. going up the hill, up past Sankey. Oh, uh, uh, Sankey. well, uh, uh, yeah. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Go up the hill, and in the face of that hill, there's. Uh, Are you talking about 14th? Yeah, 13th. 12th, 12th and 13th. Well, it's good, right? Yeah, it's quite a hill to go up there. Yeah. From Longdale. Yeah. Well, there. Yeah. 13th is not quite as much traffic. Yeah. I thought 13th was a traffic. Mm -hmm. I thought 13th is a dead end. 13th dead end, 14th goes up. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. 14th. And 14th, it's kind of hard to tell because yeah. there is no striping. Yeah. So yeah, some of those areas should be striped. I I noticed out on Airport Road too when we were looking at that, some of the striping is pretty bad. There's areas that could be striped. So I I'll weigh in on that. I with the grandkids again, we ride bikes uh, when the weather's good down there, and we've gone up and down that particular stretch. And I know it's a little bit narrow through there, but. Uh, yeah, I think a single solid line through there would probably be a good idea because yeah. we've had cars come down the hill and not be anywhere close to their side of the road. And we're riding bikes up along that ditch line there. And it's a little scary when you got little ones walking or riding a bike yeah. and somebody doesn't want to stay in their lane. So, yeah, there needs to be at least center line there. Yeah. So there's going to be some additional improvements to Sankey Park along 14th. Um, and if I recall correctly, there's actually going to be a sidewalk put in along here, along the side, as well as a sidewalk that goes down and connects the two. That would be in place. 
So let me do a little research on that and confirm either way. Um, and regardless, I mean, we'll either try to include the striping in that. Um, but let me find out why there isn't striping. Yes. Well, and if that's the case, then we need additional signage to warn people on them. So I think I think this is a very good topic <laughs> to be brought up. And I think we need to look into this a little bit further. Do you know it, anything on it, this one? No, it is pretty narrow though. Really I, nice. I will agree with Adam. It's I, I'm I'm thinking you put a stripe there. I'm not sure it's there's enough wide space enough. on each side to allow I, that center. It, yeah. It's pretty tight. Which might be why there is no striping and why we do see people just go right down the middle of it because it is narrow. A one lane. OK, well, can we how would you all feel about us doing some research internally? And talking about this one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And and just along with that, that's not the only street where people have a tendency to take. So I was taught you get half of the road and it ain't the middle half. I don't think that's taught anymore because you can drive down just about any street. And if there is a car parked on that street and only one car, the car that's coming towards you is going to be in your lane or over the center lane nine times out of ten because their depth perception they don't have any and they don't know that this far from the car it can actually be this far from the car and still clear it and it and it's just a prevalent way of people driving uh anymore because it's all the streets are choked up Yeah. OK, well, let, we'll come back to this one. Um, are there any other traffic concerns we want to talk about for next time? I think we're running out of time. Yeah. Traffic concerns? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> kind of intentionally. Yeah. I, I have one chat, one question for the chief. Um, do you feel our radar trailer is effective or I mean, I realize after a couple of days, everybody, yeah, big deal. But um, most of the time, I know it's an antique, and then most of the time, it doesn't work. Um, oh, our our radar trailer? Yeah, talking about yeah, we it is old. We do yeah. need a new one for sure. So, do you have any idea how a city population of forty one can come up with two new radar trailers? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just saw them. Uh, Unity, Oregon. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, if anybody, I'm over in that area every now and then. Well, I was there in June, they didn't have anything. I was there a couple of weeks ago, and you could slingshot a marble from one end of that town to the other. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> they had a new radar trailer at each end huh? and a decoy car. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm thinking a population of 10,000, we should be able to have at least one good trailer, I would think. Yeah, I would like a good radar trailer we can move around. Yeah. Yeah. Could we propose that under our uh, traffic safety committee to the city council that they pick one up maybe or is that something we could recommend from our standpoint? Something the chief would recommend us to do? Well, it depends on the budget for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that that would be in our, the current budget, so it is something that could be recommended. Um, and garage sale the two that we have and then use that money to roll it into buying a new one. I think that would be part of it. It would be looking into how much it costs and all their various pieces. Actually, I've looked at some. And the bare bones ones that are solar powered, or a lot of them are under seven. 
and uh, I mean, I realize the chief's probably going to have to work it in his budget, but uh, uh, there's some out there. I, you know, I've looked it up myself. So, and it's how big your budget is, it's how elaborate you want to get. Uh, so, this is actually so. This particular piece would actually fall under operations. So, um. This would be a recommendation that would not necessarily need to go to council. So this could be something that Chief and I just look into. Bam. So, yeah, we'll take a look and and we'll talk some more. Yeah. And I and mean, then, if it's something that's not in the budget this year, we can certainly mm -hmm. get it in. I would do Next. a fundraiser. Have the money. Okay. So, I'm hearing that <laughs> Councillor Thorstad. I would have. I know this committee, we could raise a lot. Well, let's find out first how much it costs and let's look at. <laughs> yeah, but there, I think there's some other ones potentially too. And let's just kind of talk about that. So, let's. Let's talk about it at the next meeting and we can come bring it back and talk about what we've discovered. Mm -hmm. Radar trailers. Okay. I want to make sure that it still works too. Well, yeah. They tell you, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I've run a bunch of those things. Like I'll have Sean's looked into them before. I'll have Perfect. Don look into it. Perfect. Thank you. Well, and then, <laughs> so then talking about, so the traffic concerns idea that I kind of wanted to discuss was more just for next meeting for chief to be prepared to talk about um, without overloading the chief. Mm -hmm. So we can talk about the trailers and I was thinking we could talk about tickets yeah. as well. Everybody good with that idea? Yes, correct parking and commercial vehicles parked on the street, large commercial vehicles on the agenda for next month maybe so we and that. would that include the uh, radar uh, traffic enforcement uh, cameras we can okay. um i almost wonder and but but we could see about having that as maybe a separate agenda item I think it would be good to talk about some of the larger problems and then kind of talk about potential solutions so that we can um, so that we don't get hung up on whether or not we want to do the radar um, tickets and that piece um, and just talk about tickets in general and yeah. then look at that and, stuff if you all would be comfortable with that. And, and I would say keep in mind too, we haven't. Um, we haven't really implemented our traffic officer enforcement position yet, and I'm interested to see the impact that that will have. We're, we're going to have a soft start with that. Hopefully here we're, we're going to be bringing on a lateral officer here at the end of the month. And my goal is um, to get an SRO into the school, but also have that person specifically focus on traffic enforcement around the schools as well. So it's not it's not going to be fully implemented, but you know, once we get a couple of other people um, on their own, which would be late spring, then we'll have somebody in that position full time. So, anyway, that's my my idea. I think that's great. Yeah. So, okay, so for the next agenda, if we talked about um, both your traffic officer position and, and your plan there. Um, any other like tickets, traffic concerns, and then as a separate item, we also talked about potential traffic solutions such as the um, the photo radar, potentially radar vans, and some other various things like that. Yeah. Okay. So we want to add that to the good of the order. That would be great. Okay. One can thing. You, can you bring all that out and mail it to the other? <laughs> committee 
possibly the agenda. It's we'll try to have that included on the minutes. Maybe mm -hmm. interest. Yes, we'll try to have that on the minutes and then as well as put on the next agenda. So a lot of people say that. I know this. I mean, when you hear it every time you hear it, Chief, that nothing's being done. I would like to start getting some data that we can put out to the public of what is being done. Like traffic data, enforcement data? Yeah. Sure. How many citations every month are you doing? Sure. How many people are you pulling over? And maybe something that could be brought to the council as well, so it's public record, uh, because I'm one of those people that says nothing's being done. Because, you know, so I want to know as a public what is being done. Sure. I can I can have uh, stats for you. Not for me, but for the city. Yeah. On that note, I I will say this. There have been a couple of occasions where I've seen an officer up in the Mountain View area on occasion. Uh, not often. So I know there are some things that are being done. It's just not as fast as some of us would like because I'm the same way. I want it, you know, I want more, I want more. But <clears throat> the ones that I've seen are very quick to pull people over on those rare occasions when I see them up there sitting in the church parking lot, they'll tag them. Whether they're getting tickets or warnings, I don't know that at the time. But and my wife sees it too. And she's like, oh, good, good. They got somebody, you know. So I, I know you guys are doing the best you can with what you have to work with right now. And it, it's just not as visible to some as others. So, you know, I want to give credit where credit's due. We have seen it a little bit, and I know there's more than one school That's in town. That's my point, is yeah. to get the credit out, right? Yeah, it, exactly. It's not just us. It's everybody in the city. That right. Facebook, everywhere, that's saying that the Sweet Home PD is not doing anything, and I know they are. Yeah. So. Um, there's effort being made. You yeah. know, and I try to give the word that, you know, that they were understaffed, and we've hired so many officers, mm -hmm. and people just don't understand or care, right? Sure. But, yeah. To get that data out for public outreaches, I think is key. You know, if OSP does a sting on Highway 20, it's all over Facebook and everybody <laughs> in town knows, right? So where they do, they go around it or they do whatever, but everybody knows. So if we did something like that occasionally, I think it would slow people down. Yeah, very well could. Because the word will fly. That's all I'm saying. I'm just trying to help you. I'm not attacking you. Yeah, no, good. So for the good of your order, we're covered. We're done. All right. We'll adjourn the meeting at 525. When's the next meeting? Thank you. Second Wednesday of every month. Oh, second, second Wednesday. Every month. Okay. Yes.